I've been looking at uh, some videos on YouTube lately, and I just got to tell you, I want everyone to know now that it takes a lot of guts to be a flat earther. It does. I mean, those are some really brilliant people, super smart, uh, curious people trying to figure out their world, and it's just wonderful, you know, and I don't think we're given enough credit because it takes a truly remarkable person to admit that they were wrong about something, okay? I just, I just want to get that out there, that a true sign of maturity and intelligence is to be able to look at your beliefs and decisions, judge them rationally, and say, you know what? This doesn't work. It just doesn't make sense. And then throw it out, change your mind. That's the true sign of intelligence. So before I get into the main part of the video, I just wanted to uh, <laughs> get into something real quick. There's a couple of people. Now, I love their enthusiasm. They're doing great work. Keep it up. Uh, but some of these people are giving the rest of us a little bit of a bad name. Specifically, people who go and look at a flat horizon, zoom their camera in, and ask, where's the curve? Okay, so here's how curves work. Uh, if you see a road that looks curved, and there's a painted line that follows the curve, if you get really close to the curve, and you look at that line, it looks straight. Like this. I can get a straight line and a bent line. I get it really close to the camera, kind of zooming in, and it appears straight. So, if you don't see a curve on the horizon without zooming in, just by looking at it with your eyes, you're not going to see a horizon curve when you zoom in. If there was a curve, you'd see less of it by zooming in, not more. Okay, back to the original thing. So, everyone knows that a sphere is curved. It's just a fact, okay? And there's always going to be a little bit of a curve visible. Always. Well, there will always be a curve mathematically there. And you can solve for this. You can prove it. It's a mathematical fact. If you have a perfect sphere, no matter how close you are to the surface of that sphere, no matter how big it is, you're going to have a gradual increase and a gradual decrease if you line up a yardstick on the horizon. So the key is you take this end and you line it up with the horizon and you take the other end, line it up with the horizon and you put it about two feet away. This is how I did my calculations. Two feet away, you should always see a little bit of a gradual curve comes up flat in the middle and comes back down if we're on a sphere. Now I'm not going to go into the calculations. Globe earthers, all you heliocentrics, if you can't figure out how to solve for that using the equation for the height of a spherical cap, using Pythagorean theorems, using Sokotoa, using the intersecting chord theorem to solve for that angle, and then from two feet away on a yardstick find out exactly how much it's going to be pushed above that. You globalists, if you can't do that math, you really have no place in a discussion about the shape of the earth, let alone any science debate, because you obviously lack a certain skill set and analytical mind that's required to solve those problems. Okay, so I solved for it. And I was actually a little surprised at the results. So if you go to a beach, you look out over the water, if the earth was a sphere, there would be a curve. You line up this end with the horizon, and this end with the horizon, and you look in the middle, and you will see that much of a curve increase. 
the width of a piece of paper held at two feet. Okay. So, since it's a gradual increase, the width of a piece of paper held at two feet, it's not going to be like a jump up in the middle or anything. Yeah, yeah, we probably wouldn't be able to see that. But, since I've already done the calculations, what size of a planet would have a visible curve? And if you wanted to see a quarter inch, just that much, quarter inch, two feet away, yardstick ends match to the horizon, your planet would have the radius of 1.31 miles. Now, 1.31 miles is not a very big radius. To put that in perspective, a ball that size would have one third the surface area of Washington, D.C., a city. One third the size. So if you've seen Washington, D.C., you've already seen three times the amount of land that could exist on a planet where you can see the curve with your naked eye. <laughs> If you ever drive to the beach and hold up this stick and you drive more than nine miles, you should have passed through where you started in that original neighborhood, having circumvented the globe and then gone an extra half a mile to the beach. So you had to drive past the beach, go an extra. Anyway, yeah, if you did that, you drove more than nine miles, you've already proven that you live on a world where you can't see the curve. So how, how high up would you have to be to see that? Well, what you would need is a 74 degree field of view. Now, that is roughly the degree arc I get when I hold a yardstick two feet away from me. This is not a yardstick. I don't own a yardstick because I just don't. I'm sorry. You would actually have to be 18,000 feet into the air with a, four, a 74 degree field of view. That is not what you're going to get on an airplane. Yeah, you, you won't see the rise because you need the whole length to see that big rise. If you just try and get in the middle, you'll see. Anyway, so... I guess that it doesn't disprove a round earth and it doesn't prove a flat earth and it doesn't prove a round earth or disprove a flat earth. Uh, all it shows is that the scale of the supposed globe is much larger than we've ever thought. I mean, the scale of this is just so massive. They faked it on such a large level that we can't see a curve even if it was there on a ball that size. They thought it through. I mean, they've had hundreds of years to get this whole scheme going. So there's only one way we're going to beat them. See, what happens is they always look at us and they're like, oh, well, they didn't prove anything because of this reason or that reason. So we gotta beat them at their own game. The only way to do this, the only way to win is to get in their minds, to understand how they think, and then to beat them at their own game. Now, that means we're gonna have to learn how to do experiments the way they do. So I need all my flat earthers out there. We gotta take this, we gotta take it to them. Now, what we got to do, we got to go to our local community colleges, okay, and take some chemistry and physics classes with a lab. Now, don't tell anyone you're a flat earther, okay? You don't want them to fail you or be like, ooh, you, you're a flat earther. You know, you know how people get, especially the scientists. But we got to learn how they do experiments. Then maybe they take some math classes and keep taking those classes until one day you can stand there and describe 
this whole globe thing with gravity somehow pointing always to it and up being away from the sphere all the time i mean right if you can if you can explain that to a professor and he says yeah you've got it and then you turn around and you show him your proof they'll start to listen it's the only way we can change them